Wait, wait, stop. Wait, sit down. Sit. Good boy, Wilson. Sit, Pharrell. Sit. Sit down. Wait. Sit down. Right, wait. 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 Go in! Him. <laughs> What's up folks? Ah, welcome to today's episode of Electric Tuesday. And today, on the show, we're gonna talk about brake by wire systems. Roll the sting. Now, if you've ever been on an airplane, a modern train, a hybrid bus, uh, driven a hybrid road car or an electric car, the chances are you've already experienced brake by wire. Um, you may well not even have realised it and that's probably exactly the point because these systems are so well designed, so cleverly designed to replicate the exact experience of the more traditional braking systems that we're all familiar with that exactly that, you don't know that it's there but it is doing a very important job, it's doing a very efficient job and it's doing it in a pretty clever way. This is kind of how it works. I think we need a diagram. Gonna need a diagram. Now, I am no artist. I'm gonna make that point straight away. <laughs> well, let's have a look at what a standard system looks like first. Standard braking system that we're all kind of, at least vaguely familiar with, the things that we've had on our cars for the last uh, 40 or 50 years or beyond. If I can get into this thing. Right. Okay, let me, so you can see this. I'm going to draw the standard system so you can see what it's like and then we'll compare that to what a brake by wire system typically looks like. Okay, put very simply. Now on the rear system, the same thing happens. The driver pushes... Oh, do you know what? I've totally that up, haven't I? Total rubbish. Okay, so. Four wheels of the car. Um, let's have the two pedals. So uh, throttle pedal, brake pedal. Now the brake pedal pushes on two little master cylinders that sit behind here. Uh, and in front of those master cylinders are two reservoirs full of fluid. Um, okay, now uh, the front master cylinder is just attached simply via uh, this reservoir full of fluid. The fluid runs through these pipes, a pipe running out to the front brakes on both sides. So when the driver pushes, uh, exerts force on this brake pedal, it pushes a rod directly onto this master cylinder, which forces the fluid through the pipework and then clamps the brake calipers onto the disc in both, on both sides of the car. That's the front system, completely separate to the rear system. Now the rear master cylinder on a conventional system does exactly the same thing. So on here, the driver pushes, a rod actuates onto this master cylinder, it forces fluid, out of here, which runs on a pipe all the way down to the back of the car, and then off to each side. Uh, so basically we're talking about fluid flow in those directions. Now the driver has, through controls in his cockpit, the ability to adjust brake bias or brake balance. We keep hearing them talk about it a lot. Uh, and he does that by adjusting how much brake pressure 
goes to the front system and how much goes to the rear system. It's a very simple system, um, but it completely changes the balance of the car. So when the driver stamps on the brake pedal, um, let's say 60% of that braking force, that braking effort that he puts into the pedal will be directed to the front brakes. The remaining 40% of his pedal efforts will be sent to the rear brakes. And the driver can play with that to, to try and um, you know, make sure that brakes don't get locked under brake, under difficult braking zones, that kind of thing. That's a conventional system. Let's get rid of that. Okay, now let's draw a, a, what would be classed as a typical brake-by-wire system. Certainly the kind of thing that uh, is used currently in Formula One. Okay. So the front setup is exactly the same on a brake-by-wire system on a Formula 1 car as it is on a conventional system that we had before we went to the hybrid era. So nothing really changed at the front end of the car. What does change though is at the rear end. Now we still have the brake pedal, we still have the master cylinder uh, connected to a reservoir where all the fluid is, is stored. You push on the pedal. Uh, as with the front brakes that pushes, because the fluid can't be compressed, uh, it pushes that fluid through a pipe clamps the calipers onto the disc. Now, on the rear system with a hybrid brake-by-wire system, the driver pushes the pedal. We have sensors on those master cylinders that detect the amount of brake pressure that the driver is applying to that pedal. Um, now, that is connected, that pipe comes out, connects to a, a computer. Let's say it's, well, we'll call it an ECU, because that's what it is. An ECU that measures the pressure that's um, been applied by the, the driver at the pedal end of the car. It then sends that signal to, we'll call that an actuator. Because that is also what it is. <laughs> an actuator that then branches off to the rear wheels of a car. Now on a brake-by-wire system, on a hybrid car, of course, as well as all of this, we've got the MGUK. Now the MGUK, this is the, perhaps the reason for the whole brake-by-wire system on hybrid vehicles like this, is because the MGUK, that motor generator unit that we now are so familiar with, is doing a lot of the rear braking on a Formula One car. Um, it's retarding the rear axle of the car and imagine you're in your road car, your petrol driven road car plowing down towards a roundabout and you go from fourth gear to third gear and you feel that engine braking, the revs rise, you can feel the engine slowing the car down. Well the engine braking that the MG UK does on a Formula 1 car is the same principle, it's just far far more aggressive. Um, whilst it's slowing down that rear axle, of course, the MGUK connected to the, uh, the crankshaft of the engine, so through the gearbox and onto the rear axle, it's retarding that car, it's putting resistance through that system, and in doing so, it's harvesting energy. That motor generator unit at that point is turned into a generator, so the rear wheels of the car are turning the motor generator unit, it's generating uh, electrical energy, and transferring that back into the energy store, the battery of the car. Now, in doing that, it slows down the rear of the car and does a, a large proportion of the rear braking. So what's happening is this ECU, this computer box here, is uh, recognizing the pedal demand that the driver is applying at this end through the sensors that measure that stuff. It takes that reading, it also uh, recognizes how much of that demand is being supplied uh, by the MGUK. So how much of the braking the MGUK is doing. By measuring that output here, and by measuring what the driver has asked for, his, his pedal demand, he can then send from that ECU a message to the actuator, which will then push the required amount of hydraulic fluid through this system and onto the rear brakes to compensate for what's left of that braking demand that the driver has required. If the MGUK is doing a large portion of it, it still needs some of the uh, traditional hydraulic system to compensate for, for what's left. So the driver feels exactly the same feeling when he presses the pedal as he would do at any other time. Um, now, you might say, what happens when all this goes wrong? Because brake by wire sounds pretty scary, doesn't it? When you first hear it and you think, my, my car is gonna be uh, braking through an electric, an electronic system, it sounds terrifying. It sounds like it's just gonna go wrong. 
Yes, it can go wrong. You know, like any technology, it can go, go wrong. We've seen it in Formula One. Do you remember? I think it was 2014, Nico Rosberg in Canada. In fact, Daniel Ricciardo, this year, 2018 in Monaco, had a brake-by-wire failure. Now, what happens in that situation is the driver presses the pedal. This whole system here fails. <clears throat> if that stops working, if that stops uh, braking using the MGUK, if we lose that part of the system, there has to be a separate, more traditional hydraulic line connecting the master cylinder at the brake pedal end to directly to the rear brakes. So in that situation, the brake, the braking effort will come straight along here, bypass this whole complex computerized system and run through a separate pipe that goes straight to the rear axle. Now, in that situation, it's not ideal because the rear brakes on a Formula One car today are much smaller than they used to be because this system is doing so much of the braking effort. So if we lose that, We've got very small brakes trying to do an awful lot of braking at the rear and what you'll find is the driver having to wind the brake bias or the brake balance much more towards the front, which is exactly what uh, happened to Daniel Ricciardo in Monaco, just to get to the end of the race. So more of the braking is being done at the front. Changes the balance of the car, but it will protect those very small, pretty fragile rear brakes. That's pretty much how it works. The reality is that it's a pretty proven system now, not just in Formula One, but out on the road. Most uh, in fact, pretty much all hybrid vehicles are now using brake-by-wire systems. Commercial vehicles use it. As I said, lots of public transport now uses it too. So it's a very well-proven system. It's a very well-developed system. There is nothing to fear with stuff like this. It is the future and we will all be driving it in our own road cars before very long. And it's one of those things that's getting some development, some real accelerated development through its use in Formula One. Anyway, I hope that has explained a little bit about how uh, brake-by-wire systems work. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you did, hit that like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell. The little bell that's down here somewhere will give you a notification every time I pop a new video up online, every time I upload, and that way you'll never miss another one. Um, so share it around. Please tell your mates and uh, let me know what you thought. I'll see you tomorrow.